Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. Welcome to Studio Live today. And what we're doing today is something a bit special. We are doing a live demonstration here in GarageBand on my iPhone. And yes, as you know, if you've been on a live stream before, it can be entertaining for two reasons. It could be educational, informative, and really cool, or it could be a train wreck. And both of those are kind of fun. So I hope you can join me for the next probably 30 to 60 minutes. It really depends. I haven't done anything completely like this where I'm starting and recording a song from scratch live. So it's going to be something a little bit different, but it should be kind of cool. If you are here for the first time, who am I? My name is Pete and this is Studio Live Today. And my goal here is to help you create, record and release your best music. And I use GarageBand on my iPhone and my iPad to capture ideas, to record my songs and even to finish and release my tracks. So I find it one of my favorite places to actually record. And I know a lot of folks who are uh, regulars on this channel also like GarageBand, like you using it like learning more about it. So if you are a seasoned veteran, well, uh, it's worth hanging around because you may get some tips or some things you didn't quite know and you can help me too. So if you're here on the live stream and you've got questions or tips or suggestions as we go, please drop them there. If you're on the replay, no problem at all. I'd love to hear your comments. Let me know what you think about this. Any tips that you have, suggestions, ideas, what you would like to see in a future song. And we are going to jump into it. Normally I go on a rant and I do a big opening rant about something and how good things are in GarageBand or, or what you should do and I'd give you lots of advice. But today, Today, we're going to dive into it because we've got a lot to get through and I want to make sure this is chock full of value for you folks that are here live and again are on the live stream. If you do want to support me, however, if you're not already subscribed, you can hit the subscribe button if you're interested in tips and tricks and tutorials all about home and mobile recording. And uh, if you do get some value out of this today, then you can hit the like button. And if you don't, then you don't have to. Uh, it's 100% your choice. But yes, I'd like to offer that out, out to you right now. Now, let's say a quick g'day to the folks that we have here live already. Hello to uh, Natalie, who's here live. Darren Bryant here and Storm Plays. Hello to you folks here. The early birds, always love to see those folks. I only set this stream up 10 minutes ago or so. So, uh, yes, if you are here live, thank you for that. And others joining me on the replay, hello to you too. Let's dive in now. Now, I'm trying something, as I said, a little bit experimental. So, what we're going to do is we're going to flick over here now to my iPhone. And what I'm going to do is actually create a song from scratch. So this is uh, nothing nothing up here yet, nothing that I've actually put together. This is going to be from scratch, and we're going to see how we go with this one. What I am going to do, though, is I've got a bit of a plan here. I'm going to create a song. Don't really know what style yet. Uh, I'm going to show you how we can add in your first instrument. So create a new song and add a first instrument. Go do all your project settings. How do you set the tempo? How do you set the key signature? How do you make sure that you have the right number of bars in there that you can start creating? And then we're going to go in, we're going to, we're going to show you loops, we're going to show the keyboard, we're going to show you the bass, guitars, strings, might even get time for a world instrument or two. And then we're going to show a little bit about mixing and adding effects and then how to share your song. So hopefully in the next, as I say, 30 to 60 minutes, you're going to be able to find out exactly what you need to do to get started. Or if you're already a seasoned veteran, you'll be able to learn some more. Maybe you'll get some tips or two. All right, let's get started here. The first thing we need to know about GarageBand is there's two places that you can start a project. You can start it here on the iCloud Drive, or you can start it in on my iPhone or on my iPad. Now, if you don't know the difference here, iCloud Drive will automatically back up your project to your iCloud Drive account, which is your Apple storage. Uh, so it's a good idea, but but it can cause some issues with sort of uploading and downloading and, and storage space and things. So on my iPhone, we'll just store it on this iPhone, which is usually better because it's quicker and faster, but it means you don't have a backup. What I tend to do is I'll start it here on my iPhone and then I will transfer it over to my iCloud drive once I've got something down and that I want to actually go with. All right, so let's come in here. Now, I'm going to use the tracks view. There's two ways to use GarageBand. There's the tracks view, and then there's the live loops view. If we tap live loops here, you can see this is our loops browser. We can come in here, and we can set up live loops, and we can do more of a DJ style performance. Quite good if you're starting out. There's a video. If you search Pete John's live loops, there's a video all about how to use the live loops and integrate it with the tracks view, which is what we're going to use in this one here. So I'm going to dive into the tracks view, and first thing I like to add in any song is to 
to actually add in some drums. And I tend to use the drummer most of the time because I just find that uh, it, it creates a good drum beat quite quickly and quite simply. Uh, so I do use that quite a lot. We've also got um, the standalone drums that you can use here as well. I've just done a video all about all the different ways you can use drums. So the beat sequencer, adding drums, using drum loops, etc. But let's go with drummer today. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to tap on drummer. Now, I might actually even start with some percussion because uh, I want to do a build out a little bit of a, a different, interesting style track. So we're here in percussion. I'm going to tap in the top left here. We've got Isabella, our percussionist at the moment. But why don't we go with someone like Quincy, some pop percussion. Uh, we're just going to pick a random one here. Something like uh, take one. Let's see what we get here. We'll hit play. A pretty simple rhythm there. I quite like that. We can build something around that, I think. I think that's going to be good. We'll hit stop there. So at the moment, all we've done is selected one track, yeah? So we can tap on the track view in the top left here and take us back to our tracks. And here we go. We've got eight bars of Quincy playing some percussion. Hit play. There we go. Playing through. All good. Now we can start layering up some additional tracks. But before I start doing that, what I like to do is start thinking about what I want to do with my track. So how do I want to sort of create it? Now what I'll do is I'll show you a couple of different methods here. So the first thing that you might notice here is we've got eight bars. Eight bars is not enough. We need more. The little plus button that we have up here, it's actually hidden. It's the worst hidden feature in GarageBand. If we tap the plus, there you go. It goes to our song sections. Now what we can do with song sections is we can either tap on section A and then we can tap plus of the up arrow or the down arrow, or we can tap and hold and drag our finger up and we can get a whole bunch more tracks like this. So it depends whether you want to create your track using sections. So you sort of eight bar loops and then sort of duplicate that and then add something different. Or if you're creating a pop song or a rock song that you're just recording a demo of, you may want to actually just give yourself you know, 100 and something bars and then go back from there. So what I'm going to do with this one, I'm going to do a loop based one because it's easier to get started with if you're starting out. So we'll leave it at eight bars manual for this section length. And by the way, automatic means that however long you play for, say you're playing guitar, if you play eight bars, then it's go if you play so eight bars, it'll be eight bars. If you play 27 bars, it'll be 27 bars, etc. So that's a little bit about song sections. And if that didn't make any sense or you want to learn more, search Pete John's song sections. I've got a heap of videos that will show you how to do that. All right, let's jump over into the settings here. So the settings, the little wrench in the top right corner here. And if you're on a smaller iPhone, it might be a little drop down that you then go to the settings afterwards. So what we're gonna do with this here is that we can set up a few things. We can set up the tempo, the time signature, and the key signature. Now I'm gonna keep this pretty simple here. Uh, the tempo, what do I want here? So I'm gonna tap in a tempo here. I'm actually gonna slow it down a little bit, go to 102. So what you can do is you can tap the tempo in like I did there, just tapping in the beat with your finger on the little button there, or you can dial it in here with the up and down. We're going to just tap it in, make it 102. I'm going to leave it in 4-4 time. If you don't know anything about time signatures, don't worry too much, except that we can come in here and we can choose 3-4 or 6-4. I'm going to leave it on 4-4. And then if we come down here, we've got our key signature. So we've got C major at the moment. Now, because I might bring a guitar into this, what I actually like writing in G major. So I'm going to switch this up, make it G major. So why is this important? And you'll notice there we've got follow song key on. Why is that important? Well, if we bring in virtual instruments, which we're going to do in this track, especially if we want to combine them with real instruments, so if I want to play some guitar, then I want to make sure that it's in the right key. So if we set it in G major here, then when we play loops, when we play it, when we add in other things, it's going to actually line up and be, uh, be in the right key. So let's leave it in G major there. And hit back here on our settings. And that's about all we really need to change for now. So there's not a whole lot that we need to set up here first and foremost. We just need to get the, the track the way that we want it first. And I suggest doing this before you get too deep into too many instruments or you're going to have to come back and do this later. So now we've just slowed down this track with Quincy a little bit. So we've got our percussion there, but now why don't we go and add in some more instruments? So let me check my notes here as to which ones that I wanted to do. So we've got that in there. What I wanted to do is uh, start with a loop. So the easiest way to build out a track is to use Apple loops. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap in the top right corner here. 
on our loop browser and you can add Apple loops. You can add your own files. So you can import your own WAV files, your own MP3 files. I've got videos all about that. Again, search Pete John's MP3 or Pete John's import. There's going to be a heap of videos about that. But what we're going to use is the built-in loops here. Now, because we're doing this and we've got a bit of a percussion kind of sound, what sort of sound? What about something like a Latin rock piano? Let's tap this one. That could be kind of cool. It's, it's probably driving the melody a little bit too much there. And you'll notice there that it is this green, it's a MIDI loop. Maybe we'll come back to that and do that uh, a little bit later. Why don't we try and find something that won't kind of define the melody yet, that's just going to be like another, a complementary kind of drum loop. In fact, if we come to instruments, we can then go here, instruments, and if we tap on uh, all drums, maybe we'll find something that's just going to add to this uh, this sort of Latin groove kind of beat here that we have. Uh, scrolling down, uh, what do we reckon? Sort of a... Uh I quite like that one, actually. We're going to tap and drag that into our project, just drop it on a track down here. Now I'm going to slide out my volume because this is where I can start sort of uh, doing a bit of mixing on the fly. I recommend mixing as you go along here. So what I've done here is I've I've come in here and I'm actually going to lower the volume here of this uh, this drum track like so. And then if we play these together. So I quite like that that you've got those two together, two complementary beats there. And that's a good way to get a cool, unique beat. Um, someone asked me a question this week. They said, uh, I, I was told to, to use GarageBand to make uh, make backing music for my YouTube videos, but then I did that and then they got flagged for copyright because they were too similar to what everyone else had put on their videos. And the key thing is here is don't just put like four different loops and then say, there you go, because everyone's using these loops. But what you can do is if you layer up two loops and create your beat with that and then start layering up your instruments, you can actually get a much better sound that way. So that's the way I'm going to do it here and the way that I would recommend. So there you go. We've added in a loop. We might add another loop a little bit later, but let's move on. I want to keep this quick and snappy. So let's add a keyboard sound, shall we now? So we're going to tap the plus button here and whack my microphone. I'll do that at least seven times a live stream. Uh, and we'll scroll across to the keyboard. Now I'm going to tap on more sounds here for the keyboard and come in here and take a look at which keyboard sound I should use. We're going to go to keys. Actually, we're in the, we're in the alchemy synth. I'm just going to go over to keyboard. And I'm thinking that some sort of either organ or electric piano is going to be the way to go here. So let's uh, let's start with the electric piano and see if this is going to work. Yeah, so I kind of want a bit of a that sort of feel. So we're just going to play a... Let's just put this, uh, lay this down. So I'm going to hit the record button. So to add in a new track, we just hit record and I'm just going to play it like on the screen. I've got my iPhone down here. That's what you're seeing on the screen there. And I'm just going to play a, that sort of bit rhythm here. So let's hit record. Okay. Now, what you notice there is it's actually, it was really hard for me to get the right, uh, the right sensitivity. So I'm going to show you a tip here. If you're finding this problem that when you're tapping, you're getting different velocities. So you're getting louder and softer ones. If we tap the settings here, what we can do is go into our track settings and go into our velocity sensitivity. And what I tend to do is turn this either off or to low because high velocity sensitivity means you're going to get a lot of variance and often it's just because you can't quite tap at the same. Uh, so if you're using, using the screen, the on-screen keyboard, I recommend turning the velocity sensitivity down. So let's hit undo now because we're going to try this one again and we're going to hit record and play this in. So that was better, but again, there's a little bit of velocity variance there, but what we can do, this will be a good opportunity to show a little bit of editing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm working on this loop here. I'm going to tap it. I'm going to tap again, and I'm going to go edit. And this will jump me into my MIDI note editor mode. So what we can do here is we can come in here and we can see all the notes that I played here. So here they all are, and you can see that I'm pretty much on the grid. Um, yeah, I'm a little bit off there. So you've got a little bit of that human feel. Now, if you want, we can quantize this. I'll show you quantization in just a moment. But for now, let's play this back and see if there's any notes that we may want to change the volume of here. So 
So there was a little spot there where it was just a little bit quiet. That one there. See here? So we can tap there, go velocity. Just turn that up a little bit. Turn these ones up. Velocity up. There we go. And now when we play that section back again. And yeah, there's still a bit of a variety in variance, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time here showing you how we can do that because you can see how we can get that done. Now, what I want to do is I want to loop this. So I only recorded four bars and now I actually want to loop it through. So I'm going to tap it and then I'm going to go loop. And there you go. It's actually extended that out. So we've actually got the whole lot there. It's going all the way through. So there you go. In a very short period of time, we've added a drummer, we've added an Apple loop, and we've added a keyboard sound. And we're already starting to build out our track. We're getting a bit of a groove going on here, but everything's in the treble. So everything's sort of high up there, isn't it? So what do we need? Well, we need some bass and we'll come back in and add some bass in just a moment. Don't worry, it's not going to be a, uh, an ad break uh, uh, unless YouTube does that. I've never quite worked that out uh, when and how it does. All righty, let's jump over because I'm going to have a quick chat to the folks who are here live and uh, take a break, grab yourself a drink. I'm going to here while we come and say good day to the folks here live. I'll bring my chat over here. All righty. Uh, so we've got some Storm plays here. Did you know you're probably... You're probably the best live stream streamer. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, Spirits of another day. Hey, Pete. Peace from sunny Detroit City. Hello, Detroit, Michigan. How are you doing? Andrew Graham. Is the 70s Latin rock piano loop officially copyrighted? Because I kind of want to claim it for one of my songs. You know the beauty part, Andrew? Great question. Great comment. Uh, all the Apple loops are not copyrighted. They are royalty free. So you can use all of these in your songs. You, keep in mind that tip I said before, which is make sure that you add in other things. But yeah, that is a really cool, it's a really cool loop. Um, I've, I've, I actually want to use it in a song too. So yeah, jump in and use it. You can use it. Apple say it's completely royalty free. There's another video if you search Pete John's uh, Apple Loops royalties or something, uh, you'll find that video. But short answer is uh, you can do that. Hello to Dr. Nitin. Uh, hey Pete, love from India. Love your videos. Thank you very much. Um, please don't copy strike that loop. <laughs> um, probably talking about that one. Uh, yeah, and Storm Storm plays uh, says yes. All the Apple Loops are royalty free, but you cannot copyright the loop itself. Exactly. So you can't release just the loop. You can release the loop in one of your songs. So keep that in mind uh, as well. Uh, Gussie Wells, hello to you. Always great to see. You here. Police Robotic 95, great to see you here as well again. And uh, I, think we've, I think I've almost caught up with everyone, have I? Yes. Uh, IDK, hello. Welcome to you. Uh, make a song using imported audio tracks. Yeah, maybe, maybe I'll bring in an imported audio track. I don't know how it'll fit into this song now that we've started it. Uh, but yes, we'll, we might be able to do that. Uh, Gussie says, I prefer to use real guitars in my recordings, real guitars and my amps. Yes, and Gussie actually um, it motivated me to do a video where I actually recorded my own guitar amp, and I quite liked it. Uh, although I, I did, uh, I have just started trying using the Stark amp by Clef Grand. I did a video on that earlier in the week, and that's a really cool amp, Tim. Mm. So, uh, yes, you can use a real guitar, though. Of course. All right. Let's get back into this song. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting into the groove of this thing. Uh, this is kind of fun. So I hope you're enjoying it. As I mentioned, if you get some value out of this one, hit the like button, share it with your friends, let folks know that this is what we do over here. But let's jump back in. We've got our three tracks here, and we want some bass. Now, how should we do some bass? Well, let's, uh, let's do a couple of ways for bass. We're going to tap the plus button down here. We're going to scroll on across to our bass. Oh, I meant to mention there's a tiny bit of lag, by the way, with because uh, I'm using AirPlay. So the it'll be a little bit behind uh, what I do here. I haven't, unfortunately, I do have an HDMI adapter, which I could connect to my PC, which I did. And then it said, this is uh, Apple's HDCP copyright. You cannot stream that to an HDMI device. So it blanked it out. So yay, go figure. Stopping me trying to use Apple products to educate people. <laughs> Apple, seriously, step up. Um, all right, let's go. More sounds under the bass here. And the sort of bass that I think we need here is probably the P bass. So we're going to tap. We've got some pretty good bass sounds here. And... And the beauty part of bass is by default, you can see here that we've got... We've got all the chords here. So we can actually just play these. It'll give us four notes that fit into that chord. We can also use autoplay for bass. So if you tap in the top right up here, you can actually dial in the autoplay. Let's just see what the autoplay might sound like with this. Fairly simple sort of autoplay. We'll tap it again. Did you know, if you tap with two fingers though, you get a different autoplay sound? I know, let's try it now. That might be kind of cool. What do we reckon? Yeah? 
Let's go with this. So we're all right on that G. We'll just tap that to stop it now. Oop, go away. There we go. So we'll go to the start of the track here. Yeah, we're seeing a little bit of lag here on this one. So we'll go back to our track view just to see if we can refresh this. Come back to me. I mentioned at the start, for those who joined me afterwards, I said uh, the good thing about this is that it uh, it could be you know really slick and really smooth, or because it's live, sometimes things are a little bit of a train wreck. Which uh, it's not it's not on it's not on train wreck track right now, but I may just need to refresh this uh, as it comes across here. So let's see if we're anywhere near here. Not quite. Oh yeah, all right. We're nearly back to uh, we're nearly back to in sync. So let's not the band in sync, but we're nearly back to being in sync. All right, let's go back to here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the record button and then I'm going to tap with two fingers on the G chord because this whole first loop is just in a G chord. I've made it pretty simple so we don't have to do a whole bunch of jumping around chords. But if we hit the record button, tap with two fingers on G. Then we get that nice G beat there. What I might do, so while we're here, let, let's change this up. So let's so we can go, let's bring it up to a, a, a C chord in the second half. But what, to do that, what we need to do is we'll just take the end off that. We're going to go to this electric piano. We did have it looped. We're going to unloop that. But what we're going to do is we're going to copy this and then we're going to paste it straight after this and paste it here. And what we could do is we can actually bring this. Let's, uh, if we go to our settings, we can transpose this. So... How many semitones do we need to come up to go to our C? Uh, I should know this off the top of my head. Uh, is it six semitones between the G and the C? Let's let's find out. So we'll do that. Let's just hear this transition. No, I've gone up too high. It's only five semitones, isn't it? Five semitones. Now let's try. Yeah. So what we can do now is we can come back to our bass. So we've lined that up there. We can come back into our bass instrument and now we can actually bring it up and bring it up onto the C. So let's do that now. We'll make sure that we're here. We'll tap on the spot we need to start this. Oh, it gets a bit fiddly here on the iPhone, doesn't it? And we'll hit record and get hit a double tap on the C. There you go. And we'll hit stop. All right, go back to there. So just for some variety. So this way we're going to be in the G here and then we're going to go to a C chord here and it's going to change up there. And you'll notice here that the transition there with the bass, if we play that. But what I want to do, and this is the beauty part, even when you use autoplay, you can still do some manual editing. So I actually want, so where was that last note before it went do do? I want, I want it to be actually that note. So let's just play this bit. And then you can do, yeah, right? Except I want it, I want it to go down to there. So let's try this. Yeah. Yeah, and then this note again should be down there as well. Like that. Oh, I've, I've removed, <laughs> undo. Undo is your friend. I say that a lot. Uh, I've changed the length of the note. There we go. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, cool. I'm happy with that riff. So we've got, we've got our percussion here. We've got our drum loop. We've got our electric piano and we've got our bass. So we're really ticking along here, which is cool. Now, Gussie has mentioned guitars. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to use the, uh, the included guitar here, the virtual guitar. And then I'm actually going to record. Oh, I just hit myself in the head with my guitar. I'm going to record a little bit of a real guitar uh, sort of rhythm over the top as well, just so you can show you how we can use an audio recorder as well. So let's hit plus here. Let's move over to our guitar. We're going to go to our more sounds. And I think that we might bring in probably just our classic clean on this one. So, so let's see if we've got any auto plays that work with you. Oh, should we, now let's, let's play like a little bit of a riff. Like, let's get a bit creative because we've already showed you the scales here. We, I've already showed you the scales here. If we tap in this blue button in the top right, we actually go, we actually go into the ability to play a real guitar string here. So I reckon we just play a little bit of a lead guitar riff over the top here. We've lost our uh, we've lost our airplay, haven't we? Let's bring it back. Let's bring back our airplay. You're just seeing a big Studio Live Today logo there at the moment, aren't you? Come back. You can do it. 
uh, like I said, it's always a bit experimental when we uh, when we come and do this. All right, let's just uh, bring you back over here while we uh, get this. Uh, technical difficulties, uh, we'll just get this corrected for you. Uh, make sure that I'm connected here to my right network. It's all a little bit uh, clunked together here at times. There we go. When you're using AirPlay, I don't know if uh, any of you are unable to connect. Well, thank you. I wasn't aware of that. I don't know if any of you use AirPlay or if you've got any tips or suggestions for using AirPlay and making it more effective, but it tends to not work the best for me all the time. Uh, let's come and have a look here. Uh, yeah, it's still not happy, Jan. Uh, I'm just going to have to close down my little streaming app here and reopen it. Uh, please hold the line. Your, uh, your time is important to me. And uh, as I mentioned, sometimes it doesn't quite work the way you want it to when it's live. Uh, is this loading back up? Uh, no. It's being a pain in the butt. Where are you? Reflector. It's not going to happen. Oh, that's a pain. Oh, we're back. All right. Can we... Can we bring ourselves back in here? No, it's not happy. No. All right, we're going to have to continue on. Uh, what I'll do is I'll play in this guitar part. You won't actually be able to see me play it. But we will get it done anyway. So I'm going to have to explain to you what I'm doing here. I'm going to hit the red record button here. And then let me just... That's what I'm going to record here. I've just had to play it just to, to get myself uh, in the groove. All right, hit record. Let's play this in. All right, so we've recorded that. That is in there and we're good to go. So I'm going to now go to my track view. Again, you can't see any of this and I apologize. We'll try and get ourselves fixed up in a moment. We'll have a chat and then we'll, uh, I'll do some on the fly checking there. Now there was a one note there that I hit wrong at the end. So just imagine that I'm tapping it and I'm going edit and then I'm coming to the end of my track here and I'm playing it back because I am. Yeah, da -na -na. I wanted that one. I wanted that one to be there. So it was going to be... Da -na 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 -na. All right. So there we go. There's our guitar added in. And yeah, the guitar sound is not fantastic. Uh, yeah, there's no no denying that. That, uh, yeah, you don't get a great guitar sound here in GarageBand. There are guitar amps. And as Gussie said, you can record your own guitar. You can do other things with guitar that, uh, that can be a lot cooler. But yeah, sometimes the guitar sounds not so good. Um, I'm going to have to... I'm going to close down and restart my iPhone... Make sure that that's saved there. I wonder if I can uh, bring in my other phone. This could be a good uh, good demo of how to transfer a project from one phone to another. Let's see if I can uh, if I can connect with my with my iPhone 10s here, and we'll see if this is going to work. We got our screen mirroring. Oh, it's letting me do it from my other phone. We're coming back. There we go. We're up. All right. Uh, see where there's a will, there's a way. Where 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 you have multiple. Uh, multiple iPhones, <laughs> there's a way. So I'm going to bring this out of here. Uh, there we go. I'm gonna need, I need a few things because uh, the reason I use my iPhone 6 is that it has a headphone jack. So let me go on a mini rant about headphone jacks because what I'm now gonna have to do, you just heard me disconnect. I'll turn the volume down so you don't get that. I'm gonna have to plug this in. So you didn't think you'd get a uh, technical lesson here on plugging things in, but I have to use my little dongle adapter here because if you wanna hear the sound from here, I'm going to need to uh, plug it in, which I've now done. So that should be able to play back from here now. Is that working? No, turn the volume up. No. Why is that? Oh, because I've still got it down over here. Duh. All right, so that's that's working now from my other phone. All I need to do now is position this, slide this over. Um, again, thank you for bearing with me here. It's always fun times when you're live. All right, and then we will. Bring it back and drum roll, please. Yay! We're back. We have a screen. All right. 
There we go. Uh, yeah, this is this is the culprit here. This was the uh, little the app. I'm just gonna have to let it sit behind there. So that's the uh, Reflector Three. Not a great ad for Reflector Three because it just crashed and failed. But uh, yeah, that's is what I use. So now you're gonna get a bonus tip of how to transfer using AirDrop from one device to another. So what I've done is I'm in GarageBand back on my uh, iPhone, my other iPhone here. So here we are. In fact, I can probably do this. Uh, yes. So what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll use the AirDrop. We'll no, we won't. I won't be able to show you that way because it's going to be too complicated. We'll go here. We'll go back to my songs. So what you can basically do is you tap it, you select it, and then you share it. And then you can go share the project. And then when it pops up here, I'm going to tap airdrop. And what you're going to see is that in a second, it's going to pop up and start coming in. There it is. It's popped in. It's called My Song. Who, who doesn't have a great song called My Song? And then we're going to airdrop in with GarageBand. And then we can throw away that iPhone. And then we can bring in this iPhone. And we can open up My Song. Where did it put it? I should have called it something that wasn't My Song. Is this us? No, that's not it. <sighs> this was a bit of a bad idea. I uh, needed a better naming convention, didn't I? Uh, it's probably called it My Here it goes. It's called it My Song 4 because I already had some My Songs. Are we back? <laughs> So what I've done now, I've just turned down that guitar because that guitar was getting a bit too, yeah, a bit too intense. And what I'm actually going to do with this guitar, uh, should I do something tricky now? Yeah, should I show you a cool tip? Yeah, this is something I like to do with my guitars, and that's to put them through an amp simulator. You might be thinking, how do we do that? Because it's a virtual track. Yeah, so we're going to merge it. So I'm going to tap it, and I'm going to merge this into uh, into itself. Whoop, not with that track. I'm going to tap it, tap merge. What merge does is it converts it into an audio track like this. And now we have the power to add it into an amp sim. So I can now come over here, select an amp, go guitar amp, and let's use a clean guitar amp. And let's use something like, well, let's use something like, what sort of amp, what do I like? What about, we make this a wah, like, was this going to sound okay in a wah? All we need to do now is go to our track view, drag this one down into our wah pedal. It's not wah pedal, wah amp, turn it down a bit and play. No, it doesn't sound great. So let's come back here and let's maybe put it into... What did we want? What was the other one? Uh, cool jazz combo. This is probably going to be all right. Now it's too soft. All right. We're going to go with it for now because uh, it'll do. Don't know if I like that. It may not last through the rest of the track, but we'll uh, we'll see how we go. Let's see if we can get back on track. And before things get, fall to pieces, let's add in some pads. Now, what are pads when you're adding in, uh, when you're creating a song like this, at the moment it's fairly dry, like the in-between parts, there's nothing playing a sound all the time. So what's good for pads? Well, strings are generally good for pads. Now, this song may or may not really need strings, but we're going to use them anyway. I'm going to come in here, we're going to tap on strings and... So it, again, what we probably want is to tap up the top here and remove some of these. So I think what we want is just a, we want a bass. So we want our basses there and maybe just one violin. Maybe a viola even. Yeah. So let's just do that. And we're just going to play this. And the way you play the strings is you basically tap and move your finger up and down. And the faster and harder, you've actually got touch control like that it's kind of cool so let's hit the record button and record in some strings shall we stop that we'll come back to track view now and take a look see so here you can see it's really it's just one big line right if we go into edit it's just one big line there so it's one big note but it's got all of this expression that's built into it it means you can't really you can't really edit it unfortunately but it's uh, when we play it back in fact let's solo it just hit done there and we'll slide out here solo this and we'll hit play oh it didn't play from the very start so it's just coming up, rising. I then sort of pulled it back a bit. And then it's rising up again. 
and then it does it again with the C chord. So how cool is that? You get the ability to just have that real sort of touch control on there. And then when you play it sort of in your mix. It comes up and down and it's a, yeah, it's like a wave that it can add the sound to. So I think that's pretty darn cool. We got the strings there. Now I wasn't going to do this, but um, I kind of want to pad and I want to, I want to add an alchemy synth because alchemy synth is cool. So if we come over to keyboards, here and if we tap on the alchemy synth what i kind of want to do is i want to add in we'll go here we're in pads we need something sort of light that's going to sort of fill out the sort of mid to highs here so let's just sample a few That's a kind of cool sound. Like it'll it'll sit. And the, the beauty of a pad is it, you hear that and you're like, oh, that's not going to fit. But if you put it down underneath the main instruments and in the track, then it's probably going to work for us. So let's hit the record button and add in a G chord of this. hit the stop button we'll come back to here and again when you hear it like that you're like no there's no way that's going to work but let's see what happens when we turn it down and let's just listen to it by itself oh, again gonna go to the very start of the track there's little bits in there i love this i love uh, alchemy synth has some cool instruments let's bring it into our mix <laughs> Yeah, so again, it just adds some sort of richness to the sound because if you, without those pads, let's just listen to it without them. Right, there's look, nothing there. If you add in a couple of pads, then it's just giving you that little bit of something different in there, yeah? You don't even really notice them. The, the, the thing with a pad is you don't want to go, oh, um, that's a really great pad. If, if you're saying that, it's too loud. It needs to sit underneath the music. Alrighty, what do we have here? I, I, wanted to add, <laughs> I wanted to add a world instrument, and then I'm going to add some acoustic guitar. So hang around for that if you want to learn how to add your own sounds using the audio recorder. And it's actually uh, probably a good thing that we're on the iPhone 10 now because it's got a better microphone. So it'll pick up a slightly better sound because we've only got the microphone. We don't have an audio interface or anything plugged in and set up. But before we do that, we'll jump back in because we've got some wonderful folks here chatting live that I want to come and have a chat with now. Uh, let's see if we've got any additional comments here. Uh, hello to Broke Chain. Welcome to you. Good to see you here as always. Sunray, yo, from Adelaide. Ah, hello. I don't think I've ever had anyone uh, anyone from Adelaide actually on a live stream before. That's pretty cool. Uh, the McCoy Group, hello to you as well. Uh, do, 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 uh, let's see. I am Adelaide. I'm just seeing if there's anything uh, we've got here. Agree, using a real guitar with an SM57 mic. Yeah, so Gussie's uh, loves using a real real guitar with a real mic. Uh, do you think I could sell bears using sell bears using GarageBand? That's a good question. Probably not. <laughs> uh, any other questions here? Nothing major going on there. Uh, da, 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 DJ Epic One. Uh, I always watch his videos. I'm just not sure if I can release music on GarageBand because I wasn't sure about mastering. Yeah, interesting. Uh, I've done a few, done a few mastering, uh, mastering videos in the past. Uh, so yeah, if you check out, check out mastering, just search Pete John's mastering and you'll find some videos about how to master in GarageBand. I use Final Touch on my iPad quite a lot. So uh, yeah, if you want to get into mastering, then that's a good way to do it as well. Uh, alrighty, let's continue on here. And keep creating this song. Uh, all right, back here. Oh, look, there's the chat. <laughs> I'll move that off to the side, and we will record. Let's let's jump in. Let's just record a guitar. So, this is the part where Pete goes. Have, have I actually even tuned my guitar? It, it's a little bit in tune. I hear that guitars are okay if they're a little bit in tune. This, this is exciting stuff, right? All right, that's in tune enough for a demo, right? All right, 
That's the, that's the sort of riff we're going for. Now, to create a audio recorder track, we're going to tap here. We're going to scroll across to our audio recorder and we're going to tap instrument. Now, the default instrument here is our nice room sound. So if we tap here, nice room, this is what it's going to use. And this is actually pretty good for an acoustic guitar. <laughs> What we can do is we can turn monitoring on. So when you're recording here, you'd be through headphones, but the headphones are basically what you're hearing here now. So if I turn monitoring on, it's, it's going, going to, to, there you go. You can now hear me and you can hear. And see on the left there that the input gain is going really high, right? That means that we're going to be in here a bit too loud. Now, because of the setup I've got here, I can't actually turn that down. So I'm just going to move further away when I record this, just so that it's not, let's, let's turn that off for a minute. That's really annoying, right? Just so that it's not going to be too clippy. We don't want that to be right up the top there. So I'm going to hit record, sit back a little bit and record in some guitar. Uh, we'll turn the monitoring on, on so you can hear it as we go. Yeah, that was, uh, turn that monitor off. Uh, that was less than, less than ideal. Uh, let's go into our track. It's probably going to be pretty peaky. Yeah, look at that. Um, so yeah, I've, I'm recording it at a too loud at volume. The input gain here is too loud, but let's just play it soloed. Okay, it's not terrible. It's not too, too bad. What if we bring it back into our mix here? Yeah, it's a, uh, it's not really. If anything, we probably need to mess with the settings here a little bit. Let's do that. We'll come out here. Uh, we probably need a little bit less compression, a little bit more, less of that room noise. And let's just turn the tone and the presence up a little bit. All right, this might be a good time to talk EQ because we have we don't have time to talk a lot about EQ. I've got whole videos again about EQ if you want to check those out uh, in the description, uh, which I'll add in later. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can search for those if you're looking for how to EQ in GarageBand. But for now, let's come in here and we're going to actually go into our track settings. And down here, we've got plugins and EQ. So we can actually come in here and our visual EQ is already on. If we play this... <laughs> What I'll do is solo it, and there we, there we go. And we'll come in here, and let's play with the, tre the EQ here. So we can turn the treble up, but what I think, we need to just mellow it out a little bit here. I think that's going to be a bit better. If we bring that back in... Uh, and again, if we were recording this, obviously I'd take a little bit more time and I'd, I'd set things up properly. You can record with the inbuilt mic here using the iPhone, but if you've got a, a USB microphone or an audio interface or some other things, then it's going to help things out as well. So there's just a couple of uh, Bo, Bo Diddley riff. <laughs> it is a bit Bo Diddley, isn't it? Yeah, I like it. Uh, alrighty. So let's go in and start. Actually, I wanted to add one more instrument, didn't I? Let's add a world instrument just for fun because GarageBand has some pretty cool instruments. So we've looked at, what have we done? Strings, bass, guitar, keys. Look at all these world instruments. We've got like the pipa, the erhu, the gurzing, uh, a bunch of others here. So why don't we just see if we can add in, like, let's go with a pipa. Yeah, let's just add this in just to add a little bit of flavor to this sound. Here we go. I didn't like that uh, that second note in that second part. But again, editing is our friend. Come out here, tap, tap again, tap edit, and we can come in here and take a look. So, so there we go, we'll just move those notes, and we're good to go. <laughs> The 
Does anyone want to get rid of this guitar? I do. <laughs> it's just not working for the vibe of the track. Let's just play it without the guitar. There we go. Uh, I'll, I'll jump in and do show a little bit around the effects because we looked, looked at EQ, but I'll show some of the other effects that I like to use that are going to enhance the track. I'll talk a little bit about how we can then share a song. And if enough people here live say that they want to hear it, I'm going to add some uh, made up lyrics. I'll, I'll throw some audio, I'll throw some vocals over the top of this just for some fun. But again, a lot enough people have to uh, have to say yes in the, in the comments there. Say yes, Pete, sing or throw a like on the video and we'll see if we do that. Uh, I, don't, I don't usually do those sort of bribery things, but uh, uh, I've been watching too much YouTube lately, clearly. All right, let's come in and take a look at some of the great options that we have in here for mixing. You've already seen me adjust some of these uh, volume sliders. So the first thing that you're going to know or need to know is that when you start recording, over here on the left, we can slide out like so. We can slide out and we can mute. You've seen me mute. You've seen me solo instruments and we can adjust the volume. So the first thing I do when I'm mixing is try and get a static mix down. So to do that, we're just going to hit play and start moving the volume. So the, the electric piano there is a little bit loud in my view, so I've turned that down a little bit. I'm hearing the guitar a bit loud, so I'm going to turn that down a bit. That electric piano a little bit louder, I think. And I might even bring in this, uh, this, these brush drums up a little bit. So what you're basically doing is you're listening through, you're trying to balance out. And that's, you know, mixing engineers and mastering used to be called balance engineers because literally all they did was make sure that all the different instruments and sounds were balanced for like an orchestra or when the live recording was done. So balancing is really important. The other thing that you're going to start playing around with is the effects. So let's just go into, what's one that we can use some effects on? Yeah, we'll use the electric piano. So if we tap here, we tap up the top here. We've already looked at the EQ, but here under plugins and EQ, we've also got things like a compressor. So we can compress the sound. Let's just give you a quick demo of what that does. So if we play this back, if we drive this threshold up, it starts compressing and the same if we bring the ratio up. So what compression does is it actually increases the volume. Well, it's weird. It actually decreases the volume, but then brings up the overall volume. What it's basically doing is instead of you having bits that are low and bits that are high in volume, it actually brings everything up. It makes up the gain so that everything's at a more level volume. So if you're finding that you've got an instrument that's missing, that's sort of a bit vacant from the mix and you want to bring it in there, but you turn the volume up and it's suddenly it's too loud and clippy, then yeah, compression can be your friend with that. The other types of uh, effects that we have in here is you, know, you can use all of the effects here we've got reverb we've got echo we've got flanger we've got chorus let's just throw a little bit of chorus on this because chorus is kind of cool on sounds like electric piano we'll just drop the mix of the chorus down a little bit at the start and let's play it back yeah around about there bring it back in the mix Yeah, I'm kind of liking that. I like uh, I like a little bit of chorus on the, the electric piano. So you can start adding, so what, what you want to do is you want to balance out your track and then you want to start using effects to add some flavor to your track. So you, know, you don't want to go nuts with this sort of thing. One final thing I'll show you with effects here and that is the master effects here. So let's turn both of these off because we what we can do is on each of these, if we just turn those off, let's play back just this track now. Hear how like lacking in space that is. Let's add in the reverb back in. Let's add a little bit of the echo back in. If we turn that all the way up. So obviously you don't want that, but you want a little bit there. So reverb, reverb and delay, these are the things that uh, are, are, are great for your tracks. They're really going to add some some uh, different sort of sounds to there. And it works really well. You can come through to all of your different tracks. You probably don't want it on your bass track, but you can start adding it to other tracks. So we're not using that anymore, but we could add some in here to our strings. We could add some into these, uh, these other ones. Now we'll add it into our guitar. The guitar track can often sound quite good with reverb and echo. So there it is with it on. We take it off. Very vacant, yeah? Yeah. So 
you can go too far with this stuff, but it does really help out and it glues your mix together. And then if we play it back now. Yeah, so I think that's really like, it, it helps it out. And again, if you're starting out with mixing or if you're an experienced mixer, then yes, you can go too far. You can put too much delay, too much echo, too much reverb. But if you're finding that it's feeling like it's it's thin and it's not glued together, it's like a, it's eight individual instruments instead of eight things together, then that's something to do. Final thing I'll show you here around the, the arranging is obviously we've only got eight bars here, but let's say we were building this track up and this was our intro. Well, what we can do then is we can go back to our sections. We can press the plus here in the top right we can actually duplicate this section. So we can go hit the duplicate button and that's duplicated that whole section into a second section. And then we can remove things, we can add things. So let's assume that we, maybe we just wanted to uh, really drop it down. We wanted to get rid of things like this piano in the, the second part. So we'll just take that off there. And let's say we didn't want the peeper there. So that's just our intro. We can delete those out of there. We tap in the top right here on the plus button. Ooh, nearly and we go all sections then yeah we can now see that we can transition between so the first section will play out its eight bars and then And yeah, you can have a different sound. So then if you wanted to add some lyrics or you wanted to do some things over the top, then you can indeed do that. Uh, so there you go. That is, we are we are nearly there. We're in the end uh, end zone here. So we'll come back and say g'day to the folks again who are here. Uh, hello, hello, Bo really diff. Uh, the Koto, yeah, the Koto is cool. Should have should have done a Koto. Uh, hello, Goth Demon 666 you are late again. Uh, freestyle rap. So Storm Place wants me to do a freestyle rap over the top of this. Uh, as does Sun Ray. So let's uh, let's give that a go, shall we? Um, <laughs> and for, who's it? Fien Heron says yes. Uh, yeah, bust that rap. Uh, everyone, everyone else wants me to rap about this. Uh, all right, we've got to do no, no pressure, but we've got to we've got to think of a, a Latin style groove rap over the top of this uh, beat, and we'll see what we can do. So to record this, <laughs> oh dear, I can't believe I'm going to actually do this. That's okay. We will do that. Oh, there's my chat again. Bye-bye. All right, let's we'll line ourselves up here and we'll see uh, what I've got to be able to do in here. Uh, I've got no idea. You know what? Sometimes you just got to go and just do it. So we're going to tap the plus here. We're going to come over to, and when you're recording vocals, it's actually probably a good thing. Even if those vocals suck, then at least I'm going to be able to show you how you can record vocals should you choose to do. We're going to go to audio recorder. This time we're going to tap voice. Now the default recorder here, if we tap in the top left, it's lead vocals. I really don't like using lead vocals. It's got a lot of delay. It's got a lot of reverb on here. I'll always tap that and bring it to either punchy presence or radio ready. So punchy presence is good, but it doesn't have the, uh, the pitch control. So if like me, sometimes you like a bit of pitch control radio ready is probably your friend but here's the key thing turn the pitch control off while you're recording it could be tempting to go i don't want to even hear myself sing so i'm going to turn the pitch control up it adds uh, additional processing and it adds about half a second of delay so you're not going to be able to sing along to your tracks if you've got the pitch control up so that's a a good tip for people getting started so we've got a bit of ambience a bit of delay here let's uh, turn monitoring on check one two three we'll pick up the iphone here it's going to sound, oh, I might turn my mic off there or come over here. Are you going to hear me twice? And check. Wah, 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 wah. Bop, 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 bop. Yeah. I reckon we're good. So you just need to make sure again that you're not clipping on your input gain. You're not singing too loudly. And again, because of the way I've got this set up right now, it's not letting me adjust the input gain because I've got it plugged through a mixer and a whole bunch of other things going on there. Alrighty. So let's come back here to our track view. And we'll hit record. So we've got ourselves set up. We've got the rest of our track here. And we're going to hit record. And when we get into this second section, I'll start playing some lyrics here. When you wake up in the morning feeling like you want to make a song and you're singing live in front of so many people, it really doesn't feel that good. Cause you might say something stupid And then they'll laugh at you Alright <laughs> Let's turn the monitor off Ah, oh, that, uh, that was fun Let's do it Alrighty, so let's go back to our track view And see what we got here So again, it's recorded a little bit loud We'll turn that little bit down And I'm going to just cut off the start of this This is just me talking to you 
like that. How are we going for time, by the way? Oh, we've got five minutes. Uh, so we'll just come in. Let's have a listen to this one and be embarrassed. Ready for this? When you wake up in the morning feeling like you want to make a song and you're singing live in front of so many people, it really doesn't feel that good. It, it does feel good. It's okay. Don't worry. In case you're worried about me, uh, let's come in here to our track view. Let's uh, let's have some fun. I, I mentioned pitch control. Let's give me some pitch control. Let's let's T-pain this sucker. All right. Let's uh, play back. Wake up in the morning feeling like you wanna make a song and you're singing live in front of. That sounds way way worse. Let's just give it a little bit of pitch control. Of so many people, it really doesn't feel that good. Cause you might say something stupid And then they'll laugh at you So feel free to be, uh, feel free to be laughing at me right now Because uh, that was a little bit of silliness But uh, again, in the space of uh, about 45 minutes We've created the start of something And this may not be something This may end up being on the cutting room floor But, you know, we've got a cool beat here a little bit of a groove here going on. Uh, we've got some potential here to build this out into something. I like that. I like that rhythm. I like that we started with a bump, da bump, da bump, da da bump, bump. It's a little bit of a, a George Michael vibe, yeah. Oh, I guess it would be nice, yeah, a bit like that. Uh, I, I won't sing any more of that, otherwise the copyright copyright police will be on to me in a flash. Let's uh, come back here and say our farewells. So. Uh, yes, auto-tune, pitch correction, exactly. Uh, Storm Place says no auto-tune. I know, it sounded terrible. Uh, all right, see. Well, thank you, everyone who has been here. It has been an experience, and thank you for sticking with me when we have the few technical difficulties. It wasn't, uh, yeah, it wasn't all uh, sunshine and rainbows and lollipops, but we got there in the end. We had to switch phones halfway through <laughs> in order to actually uh, get things done. Um, so, yes, this, this was a, a bit of a test run because I wanted to, see how we'd go doing a full show and a full live stream using the airplay being able to share my iphone or my ipad to the screen and it worked ish so it was about a 80 uh, percent success rate i would say um that's where we'll continue on with that so here's my here's my one minute of promotion so we've, we've uh, I'll give, i always say i'll give you 59 minutes of content and i i have one minute to just ask you things if you did find some value today if you just had fun or, or were laughing at me uh, singing along then uh, yeah please uh, subscribe to the channel leave a like if you liked it and got some value if you want to find out more stuff information about recording in garage band on your mobile studio your home studio and a bunch of other stuff go Go to studiolivetoday.com. You can sign up for the mailing list there where I send out uh, about once a week. I'll send a newsletter just keeping you updated and uh, on any videos that don't make the, the official channel. So there's some things that I do over on other channels that I can't put here for various reasons for copyright blocking and all sorts of things. So if you want to learn more about that, head over to studiolivetoday.com. And if you're in the market for buying some new gear, you can always go to studiolivetoday.com slash gear. And in fact, I'm just finishing off, well, probably about a week away from finishing off my uh, audio interface guide so i'm doing a complete guide to audio interfaces over there uh so yeah jump over and check out there um mr florida keys uh, great live stream learned a lot thank you i appreciate it i'm glad it was useful for you thank you to everyone who's been here on the live stream if you're watching on the replay uh if you'd like to get in touch just leave a comment down below i'm down there all the time i reply to pretty much every comment unless you call me names or are very horrible I'll gen and even if you do I'll generally reply to you anyway and say oh, I'm sorry you feel so bad um, so feel free to comment uh, if you've got something to say other than that I've been Pete check out uh, all the videos on the channel and I'll see you on the next one see ya <laughs>